Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So in today's training, right, you will learn right, how to read candlestick patterns like a professional trader, even if you are a noob like beep, right? So this is my promise to you, right, is that even if, you know, you have no experience with candlestick patterns, you have uh, a, a bit of experience, but you're overwhelmed by the sheer number of patterns, don't worry, because in today's video, I will show you a simple method to read candlestick patterns like a pro without memorizing a single pattern, right? Without getting confused by the sheer number of patterns and without getting overwhelmed. It's very simple, right? If you just follow my simple procedure, all right? So let's kick things off, right? First and foremost, the basics. So candlestick patterns is a way to show prices on your chart. And it's not the only way. You have stuff like bar chart, line chart, etc. So candlestick patterns is one of the more popular approach. And when you are dealing with candlestick patterns, right, you must be aware that there is for price point right for every candle on your chart is the opening price the high the low and the close so when we talk about a higher is the highest price point right of the candle at a particular point in time and the low is the lowest price point of the candle within that particular point in time right depending uh, which time frame you're trading on whether is it the daily weekly or monthly so let me explain so candlestick patterns usually have you know two popular colors, the green and the red bar. Sometimes it might be white and black depending on the settings that you use, but more, more commonly it's red and green. So for example, over here, this is a green candle. What a green candle means, right, is that the price has closed higher for the time period. Okay, so the opening price is always here for a green candle right here. This is the opening price. This is the closing price. This is where the price has closed within the time period. And this over here, right, the, the highs that you see and the lows over here, we call this the wicks, right? Some people call it upper shadow, some call it lower shadow, but you just treat it as a, call it a wick, right, to make things simple. So this is the upper wick, the lower wick. And the upper wick, right, signifies, right, the high of the time period. The lower wick, right, signifies the low of the time period. And you might be wondering, hey, Reina, what is time period exactly? So here's the thing, right, candlestick, Charts, candlestick patterns, it can be shown on different time frame. The daily time frame, the weekly, the monthly, the 5 minute, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you you desire, right? It can be shown on the respective time frame. So let's say you are looking this green candle on a daily time frame. What this means is that this is the opening price of the day. This is the closing price of the day. This is the highest price, right? That the, the, the price has actually went, right? Within the day itself. Okay, the, the highest price point within the day that the, the market did move to the, towards that high. And this is the lowest price point, right, within the day itself that the price actually traded to. So this is what we mean by, you know, the high of the day and the low of the day, all right? So likewise, right, for this one, the red bar, very important feature is that the green and red bar, their opening and closing price is at different location. When you see a red bar, it means that the price has closed lower for the day. So for the price to close lower for the day, where must the open be? The open must be here, right, here, this point, opening price, and this is the closing price. And likewise, this is the high of the time period and this is the low of the time period. So let's say you're looking at this on the one hour time frame. So this is the highest price, right, that the price made within the last one hour. And this is the lowest price that the price went to within the last one hour, right? So if this is a one hour candle, okay? So this is the basics of candlestick patterns and how to read it. And here's the thing, right? For those of you who, if you know, dabble in candlestick patterns for a while, right, you will face this problem. And what's this problem? It's this, right? There are so many patterns out there. You have the three white soldiers, the bullish engulfing, shooting star, hammer, harami, doji, etc. And if you memorize all this, you know, weird naming patterns, right, it's a matter of time before you get overwhelmed. Okay? And, and really, right, memorizing patterns is not the way to trade the markets, right? So this is a problem that I face personally, and I suppose, right, many traders would encounter something similar as well. So what's... The solution to this if you don't want to memorize candlestick patterns and at the same time right you want to know the meaning behind it so my suggestion is this every time you look at a candlestick patterns and you are not sure what it means right ask yourself these two questions because when you ask yourself these two questions right you will gain clarity right that you you've never seen before okay it's kind of like an x-ray vision right and you'll see something right that you know most traders will never see right if they are you know always trying to memorize patterns so here's the first question where did the price close relative to the range? The power of this question, right, will tell you who's in control. Is the buyers in control or the sellers in control or nobody in control? Okay, so here's how it works. So if you look at this right now, this green candlestick pattern, right, it tells you that the price has closed higher for the time period. It opened over here and it closed here. So you notice there is no lower wick, right? So in other words, the opening price is also the low 
of the day, right? Let's say this is a daily candlestick pattern, right? Then the opening price is also the low of the day. And notice that there is an upper wick over here. Okay, so one thing you notice is that, is that the price, right, it closed, right, near the highs of the range. So what exactly is the range? The range, simply put, right, is the distance between the highs and the lows. So this is the highs, okay, and you go all the way down, and this is the lows. Okay, so this is the entire range. And you notice, right, the price is actually close here, which is near the highs of the range. This is where it closed. Okay, and this is the highs, and this is the lows. The price actually closed near the highs of the range. And this tells you that, hey, who's in control? The buyers, are, the buyers are in control, and that's why they are able to close the price right near the highs of the range. Another example. This one, yes, it's still a green candle, right? It, the price is close above the opening price. But is the buyer in control? Are the buyers still in control? Well, again, just use this question, right? Where did price close relative to the range? So where is the range? Well, this is the highs, which is here. And this is the the lows, right? Opening price and lows is the same price point. So this is high, the lows, right? So this is the entire range of the candle. And now, where did the price close, right, relative to the range? If you look at this, right, the price actually closed over here. This is the closing price. So let's say it's over here. Closing price is here, highs is here, and lows is here. Now, we are seeing a different picture than the one previously, right? Why is that? Because now you realize that the price, it only closed marginally higher, right, relative to the range. What does it tell you? It tells you that at one point in time, right, the buyers were actually trading near these highs over here. And from this highs, right, to this close, right, for that to happen, right, it means that sellers at one point in time, right, they have to come in and push the price lower down all the way to this close over here. This tells you that in the background, right, there are there is selling pressure lurking around. And this is a sign of weakness. So yes, the price did close higher within the time period, but you can see that there is a strong price rejection, right? Strong selling pressure in the background, right? That caused the price to actually just close marginally higher within the range. Okay, so this question tells you who's in control. So at this point, you look at this candle, it tells me that the sellers, right, are actually the ones in control. Okay, where did the price close relative to the range? Okay, second question is this. What's the size of the pattern, right, relative to the earlier ones? Then this question, right, it gives you or tells you the conviction behind the move, right? It tells you whether, is there really strength behind the move, right? Is it really a smoke screen or is this for real? So let me explain what this means. So if you look at this chart, okay, notice that this is the, the retracement, okay? But, and you look at this, right? This tells you, if you studied what I mentioned earlier, it tells you that the buyers are in control, right? The price has actually closed near the highs. But if you look at the range of this candle, the most recent candle over here, relative to the earlier candles, you notice that the range of this candle doesn't really signify much, right? It's not really very large, right, compared to the earlier ones. In fact, in, in terms of the range of the candles, in terms of size, it's pretty much the same. So this tells me that you know, there really isn't any strong buying conviction behind this, this candlestick move, right? There really there isn't anything, you know, uh, phenomenal or, you know, anything outstanding, okay? But when you compare this, right, with this one over here now, Okay, you look at this, right? This is the retracement. And now, you see this big candle over here. Look at the size of this most recent candle. Look at the size of it relative to the earlier ones. This tells you now that there is strong conviction behind the move. Not only are the buyers are in control, but there is also strong conviction behind the move. Okay? Can you see where I'm coming from? So when you look at this uh, candle, right? Answering the second question, right? What's the size of the pattern relative to the earlier ones? It tells you, right, the conviction behind the move, whether is the move real or not. Okay, so this is what we are trying to understand over here. So once you understand these two questions, right, then you pretty much, right, can actually read any candlestick patterns, right, that you come across. Just need to remember the first question, where did the price close relative to the range? It tells you who's in control. And the second question is, what's the size of the pattern relative to the earlier ones? All right. So bonus, right? Just one final bonus tip for you is that candlestick patterns, they are very versatile. You can actually combine them, right? Across different time frames, and you can actually, you know, visualize and actually see right, what the pattern will be on the higher time frame. Does it make sense? Well, let me give you an example. So if you look at this pattern, right? Let's say on the four hour time frame, right? You have this bearish bar over here on the four hour time frame. And the next candle, you have this bullish bar over here. So when you go up to the eight hour time frame, 
okay, you, you will realize that the candlestick pattern will look something like this, this hammer over here. And how do you get this picture of this hammer over here? Very simple. You take the first candle, the opening price of the first candle, right? It will be the opening price of this candle over here. The closing price of this second candle, which is here, the closing price, will be the closing price of this candle over here. And then the highs, right, within this two time period, right, the highs within this eight hour time frame, right, the highs and the lows, right, will be the, exactly the highs and the lows, right, for this eight hour time frame candle over here as well. Okay, so sometimes if you are looking at the chart, you don't quite understand what's going on, man, or what, what's going on, right, who's in control. One candle is green, one is red, you know. So what now, right? What you want to do is just, just combine these two candlestick patterns and you will have a clearer understanding, right, of who's in control, right? Let me give you an example with a, a real chart, shall we? Look at this. Okay, so for example, let's say somehow or rather you look at this chart and you wonder, man, Rainer, look at this, Rainer. This is so confusing, right? One moment the candle is green, next moment is red. So should I be, you know, buying or should I be selling or what's going on? Man, I'm confused. Well, very simple, right? Do what I just shared with you earlier. You just take the opening price of this candle, the first candle over here, and you notice that the price on the second candle is closed marginally lower, right? So the opening price is here, the close is marginally lower, the highs of the candle is here, the lows of the candle is here. So if you visualize this, right, what does this give you? It will give you something like this, right? The price open here, it closed marginally lower. So let's say we imagine that this is a, a lower close. Then you notice that the highs of the candle is actually here, okay, which is very high from the close, right? Quite a long distance. So I, I assume that there'll be a very long wick over here showing you price rejection. And there's one very tiny wick at the bottom here. I'm not sure if you can see it. So let's just draw this little wick. All right, so I'm guessing, right, the price action on the eight hour time frame, this is the four hour time frame, right? The price action on the eight hour time frame will show me this price rejection, right? So if you go up to the eight hour time frame, and yep, there you have it, right? This candle over here, right? This tells you that there is rejection of higher prices over here, right? And that's how you actually combine candlestick patterns to, to make sense, right, out of something that, you're not quite sure of, right? So this tip, right, this bonus tip could help you along the way as well, along with the two questions that we have covered earlier. So let's do a super quick recap about today's topic on candlestick patterns, right? So candlestick patterns, it shows you the open, high, low, and close for a given time period. Could be a daily, weekly, monthly, five minute, 30 minutes chart, whichever you decide. And instead of memorizing every single candlestick pattern out there, just ask, ask yourself these two questions. Number one, where did the price close relative to the range? This tells you who is in control. However, this question itself is not a full picture because you also want to understand right, the conviction behind the move and that's where you ask yourself this second question. What's the size of the pattern relative to the earlier ones? If the pattern is of similar size, then it tells you that there's really not much conviction behind the move. right? But if the pattern is huge, right, uh, two or three times larger than the earlier range of those candles, then it's telling you that, hey, there is conviction right, behind this particular move. And finally, right, I share with you how you can actually combine candlestick patterns on a lower time frame, right, to form a higher time frame candlestick pattern. This is a additional tip for you if you know you sometimes you still look at a chart, you're not quite sure what this means. Just go up to a higher time frame, right? Maybe you're looking at a two hour. Just go up to the four hour time frame, right? And you will have a, a different uh, view, right? You have a better understanding of what's going on. So if you are looking at one time frame and you not sure what's going on, go up one time frame higher, right? From a two hour, you can go four hour. A four hour, you can go eight hour time frame. And trust me, right? Things will be clearer for you. So with that said, right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, right, hit the thumbs up button. If you don't enjoy this video, then hit the subscribe button. And with that said, I've come towards the end of this video. Any uh, feedback, questions, let me know below. And know, uh, any topic you want me to cover, leave it in the comment section and, and I'll do my best to help. With that said, I wish you good luck and good trading. I will talk to you soon.